Welcome back. This is KD Drummond of bloggingtheboys.com, and we're here to talk about the three hot storylines from the early offseason for the Dallas Cowboys. There are some changes that are going on right now, and I think we need to speak to those. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to cover what Jerry Jones said at the beginning of the offseason, that things were going to get very uncomfortable around Valley Ranch. Obviously, Valley Ranch is the Cowboys headquarters in Texas, and that's where the coaching offices are, and things got very uncomfortable pretty quickly this offseason. When Black Monday happened, which was really the first day of business after the regular season ended, there were a lot of coaching changes that happened. Lovey Smith got fired in Chicago. Um, the Arizona staff uh, with Ken Wisenhunt, they were let go and the GM was let go. And I immediately took to Twitter and I said that I wouldn't campaign for Rob Ryan to be removed from his duties as defensive coordinator, but I wouldn't cry about it either. Lo and behold, a, a week after that, Rob Ryan was let go, and the Cowboys have now brought in Monty Kiffin to run the Dallas defense. This, of course, brings a switch from the 4-3 defense to a th- uh, sorry from the 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense, better known as a Tampa 2, which uh, Kiffin and Dungy created in their in the early years, and, and it was kind of a spinoff of some other defenses they had worked with. Uh, but it was developed based on the cover two defense, and then they actually brought a proponent of dropping the middle linebacker into coverage to allow the safeties to better cover the sidelines of the field. There's going to be a lot of zone play in this defense as opposed to -to man-to-man, so hopefully you're going to see a little bit less of the confusion that we've often seen over the past few years of Dallas defenders looking at each other, pointing to each other on whose responsibility was supposed to be to cover a guy. They're all all going to have basically zones to cover uh, as far as the linebackers and the secondary are concerned. Brandon Carr, Morris Claiborne, uh, they, they, they need to be more physical. They need to be probably better tacklers than what you saw from Claiborne in his rookie season. But there's still going to be a lot of opportunity for both of them to play bump and run coverage, uh, to press at the line, and then bail out and, and retreat back into zones, things of that sort. Obviously, the key is going to be uh, Sean Lee. He's going to be the middle linebacker, the Mike, as we call it. Uh, he's going to be roaming all over the field, making plays into the secondary, things of that sort. You can also look for Bruce Carter, who will be the weak side linebacker, the Will. He'll be making a lot of plays. He'll be actually, a lot of the plays will be funneled to him as a basic tenet of the defensive scheme for the front four. They're going to kind of funnel things towards the weak side linebacker, so you can expect him to make a lot of plays in this defense. Um, Cowboys, they also brought in Rod Marinelli, the former defensive coordinator for Lovey Smith. He was actually with uh, both of the guys in Tampa Bay. He was, he was under Monty Kiffin before. He'll be the new defensive line coach. He replaces Brian Baker. He'll be looking, obviously, both of them, the entire defensive scheme will be predicated on the front four being pass rushers. They're going to be looking for a lot of penetration from the front four as opposed to the 3-4 defense where a lot of times one or two of the defensive ends, uh, the three down linemen, would be more in run in run stopping mode and trying to take on two offensive linemen at the same time. In Kiffin's 4-3 under over defense, whichever way things are shaded, there is going to be basically a one technique guy that's going to be facing double teams, um, but there's also going to be a three tackle end, which hopefully if he is able to play uh, and stays with the team Jay Ratliff will do, uh, then you'll have your five technique uh, defensive ends, DeMarcus Ware, possibly a more run stuffing guy like Jason Hatch, or you could even see Anthony Spencer coming back and playing that role on the opposite side. A lot of times you'll see uh, bookend defensive ends such as what Indian Annapolis did with their version of the, of the defense with Robert Mathis and um, and Dwight Freeney with them being penetrating defensive ends. It does leave you susceptible to the run, but in today's NFL, it's becoming less of a hindrance to be susceptible to the run if you can get to the quarterback and hurry him and you can make big plays and create big turnovers. Uh, there's also the philosophy, obviously, that I referenced early with Jason Hatcher playing and or maybe even uh, last year's rookie Tyrone Crawford, who was drafted for his versatility, that they would be more run-stuffing type of guys, but they still have the ability to pressure the passer. So you could be seeing a lot of dynamic things out of this defense, I think that the uh, the fact that they kept Matt Eberflus, who was supposedly or reportedly, I should say, the X's and O's behind Rob Ryan's madness. At the end of the season, it was rumored that Rob Ryan wasn't even attending the defensive meetings and Matt Eberflus was running them. They also kept the DB's coach, Jerome Henderson, who was brought over with Rob Ryan. So those two defensive assistants who the Cowboys are very high on, they stayed under Monty Kiffin and they, uh, as I said, they brought in Kiffin and they brought in Rod Marinelli. So it's really a crack staff. 
Now, another thing that we want to talk about this offseason very quickly is the contract situations of two guys, mainly one that I mentioned before, Anthony Spencer and then Tony Romo. Now, Spencer is a free agent. He was a free agent last year. The club franchise tagged him. He got around $8.8 $8. or something of that sort. If they franchise him again, it's going to be $10.6 million, which is a pretty hefty price to pay. Um, I don't know if the Cowboys are going to be able to keep him because when you look at the at the contracts of 4-3 defensive ends, they're actually pretty high compared to 3-4 uh, ru uh, rush linebackers. And if you're considering the fact that you, know, you might want to have Anthony Spencer playing as a Sam linebacker, uh, the strong side linebacker, which is a role that he often did play with Dallas uh, in the previous years, then you're going to be looking at putting him in a price range that's really not where other Sam linebackers are, pay are paid. There is a little bit of historical precedence to somebody of Spencer's size playing the Sam linebacker. New England did it with Dante Hightower, their rookie from this year. I have an inside source that actually told me that they kind of, New England kind of molded their draft picks of Chandler Jones and Dante Hightower around the Cowboys combination of DeMarcus Ware and Anthony Spencer. So we'll see if that's something that they choose. Reportedly, they are in contract negotiations, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. We'll have to be very, we'll have to keep a close eye on that to see how it goes. Uh, another contract that we need to pay attention to is Tony Romo. He has one year remaining on his deal. He's set to count about 16.8 or 17 million against the Cowboys cap this season. That number is probably going to have to come down if the Cowboys are going to be able to do anything in free agency this season. They're actually over the cap right now, but they do have a, a, a myriad of moves that they can pull in order to get under the cap and give themselves some wiggle room to probably, I, I did it on, on a blog post the other day, to probably get around 10 million under the cap. And that'll give them enough wiggle room to sign guys to contracts like they did with Brandon Carr, where the cap hit in the first year is only around 2 to $3 million. Obviously, the Cowboys don't have a full 53-man roster right now, so you are going to have to leave some wiggle room to sign your lower-tier free agents. That brings us to our next point that we want to talk about is the fact that Dallas is going to have a lot of holes to fill this year. You're going to need some help on the offensive line. We know what Doug Free did. We know that the, uh, that the guards, um, for me, especially Mackenzie Bernadale, uh, he, he was a problem spot. Some people think that Nate Livings was actually worse on him. I don't agree, but there are some people that feel that way. Dallas obviously will need to add some beef to the defensive line for this transition, and they're also going to need to look at some, um, some safeties because we don't know what's going to happen. Right now, they're penciled into hoping for the future with Barry Church and Matt Johnson, a rookie who never got on the field last season, or he might have gotten like three snaps before he entered his hamstring again uh, but the situation is probably going to be something that they have to infuse some talent into there and they're also going to need some backup capable linebackers because while they were okay for what they did this past season I don't think that I'm at the point that I want to see Ernie Sims lining up in any kind of you know uh, any kind of important role for the Cowboys I can see bringing him back as a, as a backup um, but that's about it so the Cowboys have a lot of holes to fill, and before people start getting into all of these mock draft scenarios, you kind of have to get through free agency first, because that's really where you want to fill your holes with people that you know are bona fide NFL talents. There's no guesswork, and then that frees you up to being able to fill the roster with draft players that are the best that you can find, as opposed to trying to plug in a hole here and a hole there. So it's a lot of stuff that we're going to be covering this offseason. I wanted to bring you the overview of the important stuff, the first steps in Dallas building this 2013 team and we'll be back with a lot of videos in the near future on breaking down the science behind pretty much everything that's going on with the team i appreciate you joining us please make sure that you subscribe to our channel sbn blogging the boys we'll be back shortly with some more videos don't forget about our other channels sbn nfl and sb nation salute